We'll now proceed into analyzing the four teams' competences, as you can see in this diagram below. These are namely the strategic competence, the innovative competence, the informational competence, and the operational competence. Strategic competence. It makes the team a key actor and it makes it survive as a super individual actor and allows it to develop as a system itself. This is achieved through activities such as 1. Maintaining a steady balance, which allows the team to build up its identity and its characteristic as a system. Maintaining a balance makes the team enhance strengths from members and the influence of the organization as well. 2. Determining the course of events, which allows the team to open and close event cycles. It's important that events and actions of a working team are time-limited and determined so as to maintain the structure and satisfaction of its members. Objectives are easily achieved when structured in cycles. 3. Taking energy from the environment. It is fundamental that the team drags energy from the surrounding environment, both for tracing material resources and for introducing cultural elements and competences. No team is self-sufficient and needs to be active in order to drag resources from the environment. This, of course, requires efforts from the whole team. 4. Negative entropy production. It's important that the team grows significant levels of relational and operational synergy in order to make it possible to produce negative entropy. The only way to contrast entropy is by tacking energy from the external environment as well as from the members' motivations, commitment and efforts. Innovative competence. It makes the team integrate with subsystems, develop synergy with the external environment and by doing this, enriching the system itself. This is achieved through the following diverse actions. 1. Identifying themselves as a new system. The team needs to acknowledge its own identity and its features as a new and unique system. This only happens when the team is capable of identifying its own potential and understanding itself based on its dynamics. 2. Adapting to subsystems and the environment. The team elaborates and integrates the feelings, the thoughts and actions of its members and of the environment as a whole. It is a process of active assimilation of, of new energy, leading to a significant growth of the system. The team will develop a different and higher balance after its adaptation to the members' needs and capabilities. 3. Differentiating roles and functions. This is a peculiar feature of a team and is directly linked to the system of competences of individuals based on leadership. Individual competences play a key role in innovating the team while getting richer through functions and roles allocation. 4. Equifinality. This means that the team can achieve determined goals even from diverse starting positions and through different paths. The individual subsystems within a group do have different goals and approaches for the same issue. Therefore, the chance to keep and integrate differences within the same system grants a compatible development. Informational competence. It allows the exchange between the team and its surrounding environment, as well as an internal feedback. This is achieved through the following actions. 1. Setting up an informational system. The team requires to have a structured channel of communication towards its inside and outside environment. These communication channels must be broad and flexible. They don't have to overload the team with work, and at the same time, they need to have a shared code and style in order to create the right relationships among members. 2. Processing information. The team must be able to collect and classify all the useful information aimed at its survival and maintenance together with all the data and information crucial for accomplishing the tasks as well as its levels of satisfactions. This action requires more than just individual thought in order to have a team knowledge, which is just not the sum of members' points of view. 3. Getting information. The team needs to collect all information and data regarding requests and positive or negative feedbacks, which are pivotal to keep good relations with the environment. Information coming from the outside enter the system and only some of them are integrated and processed. 
the ones the team accepts and considers to be useful. Chaotic information needs to be analyzed through and be translated and categorized according to the system. 4. Providing information. The principal means used by the team to give back an output to the organization is providing elaborate information supporting its survival and development. This action is crucial in order to define the result achieved by the team and its efforts in improving the product service, which is the real and tangible contribution that the team offers its organization. Operational competence. It allows the team to govern the enforceability of its activities through the following actions. 1. Determining tools and methods. The team needs to define its working rules so as to respect characteristics and balances among subsystems. The team has to identify methods and tools based on its levels of differentiation, integration and balance of powers. 2. Checking the process. The team must be able to diagnose dynamic and productive processes, must get acquainted with its functioning and malfunctioning in order to correct mistakes and to overcome possible standoffs. Checking the process shall involve all subsystems and thus results in a number of sub-events of the relational and operational process that cannot be checked when they occur but only looking back at it. 3. Giving results. The working team system has to give results to the external environment, to the organization. Sometimes giving results to the organization equals the dissolution of the working team. The quality of the final product is directly linked both to, to the operational as well as strategic capabilities. 4. Assessing the results. The team must be able to measure the value of its products in relation to the feedback from the environment and from its subsystems as well. The assessment of results allows the induction of new energy within the system, which can eventually be used to start a new event cycle.